Hello and welcome. I'm Mark Steele and this is The Ultimate Guitar Show. We've got an awesome show for you today. On the All About Technique section, I'm going to teach you how to detune your guitar and show you how to play harmonics. On Riff of the Week, I'm going to give you a riff that uses harmonics and detune in it. And the really cool thing is we have Brian Swerdfeger here. He is a tone guru and he's going to teach us how to make our guitar sound killer. Kind of give you the idea of how all the sounds work behind the scenes on a guitar. So sit back and enjoy the ultimate guitar show. It starts now. All about technique. We're going to do kind of two sections in this episode today. I'm going to teach you about drop D tuning and then I'm going to show you how to do harmonics. So let's talk about drop D. What is that? When I talk about drop D tuning, what I'm talking about is taking the sixth string and tuning it down so that it's a D instead of an E. The way to do that is to basically take our normal way we tune a guitar, fifth fret, sixth string, which is our A against our fifth string open, which is our other open A. That's normally how we tune the sixth string, but to drop it down a whole step, what we do is we actually move up a whole step on the sixth string to the seventh fret, and then tune our sixth string down until the seventh fret of the sixth string matches the fifth string open. It sounds like this. Now I always bend the string afterwards to make sure that it slipped completely off the tuning peg there. But once you get it down, what happens is you have what's called drop D. Now if you have a tuner, you might want to try doing this tuning thing with your tuner plugged in and kind of watch it. Use your ear and use the tuner. And what you'll find is now when you hit the sixth string open, it should say D on your tuner. Now what this does for you, it makes the guitar a little bit lower, a whole step lower on the, the bottom string there, but it also gives you something really cool that guitar players like, and that is it gives you this power chord, an open power chord. Watch this. If I hit the uh, sixth, fifth, and fourth strings open, and I have a big, fat, low-sounding power chord. Check this out. It sounds pretty cool. So, so just hitting it open, you have a chord, but that what makes it really neat is that you can move this chord around really simply, and you can do that by simply barring across those same uh, three strings with, say, your first finger. I can go up to the third fret, fifth fret, anywhere you want, and it's always a chord. So if we call it slide one, what you're going to see is that the sixth string is an open D. The second part of slide one shows us uh, a few power chords just to give you an idea. And remember, we write power chords as fives. They're called like a D5 or an E5 or whatever. The open sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string in D tuning is an open D power chord, also known as a D5. If you look at the slide, we also go up to the third fret. We have what's called an F5, D, E, F, right? Up to the G5 and back down to the D. Now you can play this however you want. I don't expect you to maybe necessarily play just those chords, but maybe try to make a riff out of this and get creative with it, because that's half the fun of playing guitars, is sitting here noodling away and coming up with these cool little riffs. So you might take those same chords and just hit those bottom three string, bar your finger and play all over the neck. It might sound something like this. You can't really find much easier way to play the guitar than doing that that actually sounds cool. And with that added element of the guitar sounding a little bit lower, it's pretty sweet. I'm going to go to a clean sound here, and you look at the last part of slide one, what you're going to see here is basically just a D chord shape up on top from strings four, three, two, and one. But now that we have that sixth string tuned down to a D, we can do a big fat open D chord, and it sounds like this. It just kind of creates this big wall of guitar sound. So experiment with that. Practice getting the tuning down so you can tune uh, from the D to the E, the E to the D, etc., and just get comfortable making the drop D tuning. And then experiment with those power chords. Harmonics. What harmonics are is they're basically little overtones on the guitar that sound really cool. Let me demonstrate. It sounds like this. Now you've probably heard harmonics in a lot of different riffs on the guitar, but how do we do them? What we're going to do is basically lightly touch the string directly over the fret bar. If we can get a close-up of my left hand here, what you're going to see is that the harmonics that I'm going to be playing are on the 12th fret, 7th fret, and 5th fret. Those are called natural harmonics, and those are the most common spots on the electric guitar. There are other types of harmonics that we'll get to on another lesson, but today we're just going to talk about natural harmonics. 
So I'm gonna go over the 12th fret. Now when I talk about playing over the 12th fret, I'm actually talking about playing over the bar. And the way that you'll know it's the 12th bar is if you really look back to the first fret and say, where's the first metal bar? Well, the first metal bar, the first fret, is after the first fretted note section, the space, right? So in this case, the 12th bar is gonna be after the 12th fret as well. And you know the 12th fret because of the two dots. What you wanna do is you wanna lay your finger really lightly on the strings. You do not wanna push down on the strings at all. It's just barely touching. If we get that close up, you can see I'm gonna barely touch the string with my left hand, and with my right hand, I'm gonna strike the string pretty hard with the pick, and then lift off. And when you do that, you get what's called a harmonic. Seventh fret, same thing. And fifth fret. Or you could hit all of them. Another really cool thing you could do with the harmonics is create little melodies like uh, Rush's song uh, Red Barchetta that starts out with a harmonic. That's kind of a nice little melody, or you could do stuff like. Uh, kind of let all the notes bleed together. So what I want you to do is I want you to experiment with the harmonics, maybe create melodies, try to get the notes to ring real clearly with them, and just get real comfortable with harmonics because we're gonna use them in the riff of the week section this week. We're gonna combine what we did, the drop D stuff, as well as harmonics uh, for the riff of the week. So let's go ahead and do riff of the week. Riff of the week. Like I told you guys earlier, we're gonna be doing some drop D tuning as well as some harmonics all placed within a riff. Check this out. So that's what we're learning right there. So let's go ahead and call up slide number one. And remember, your guitar should already be in drop D tuning, which is that six string tuned down to a D, the rest of the guitar is standard. The first section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by hitting the sixth string open, placing our third finger on the third fret of the sixth string and sliding up to the seventh fret. One more time. And then what I do is I roll my third finger back and I'll hit the harmonics on strings uh, four and three on the seventh fret and I hit both strings simultaneously with the pick. So the first section sounds like this. Then I'm gonna to go to, a, basically it's an inverted power chord. It sounds like this. We're gonna do a first finger, third fret, sixth string. We're gonna bar the third fret, but we're gonna add our third and fourth fingers to the uh, fifth fret strings four and three. Or you can take your third finger and bar it here on strings four and three. Whichever's more comfortable for you, or some people even could use your fourth finger there. This is just a preference thing, so you can do it this way. It's the same notes, three, three, five, five. Or this, or this. And to be honest with you, I don't even know which way I do it, but I'll figure it out when I play the riff. It's, I play the riff so many times that when I do it, I haven't even thought about which fingers I use. But uh, we'll figure that out in just a second. So what it sounds like, we're gonna go to that chord, we're gonna do down with a little rest, then an upstroke. And then we're gonna do three clicks. And what a click is, we basically just pick our hand up so it's keeping these strings, it's touching the strings, keeping them quiet. So we don't lift off the strings, we stay down on the strings. We're gonna do down, up, down, click, right? You hear the strings just click? All six strings. Then I'm gonna refret that last chord out, the three, three, five, five thing, with an upstroke and kind of slide off. Kind of like that. And that has to be an upstroke. Slowly, that whole first slide sounds like this. One more time. Okay, that one part, I'm gonna try that chord thing for you. This is what it should sound like. One more time, down, up, click, 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 up, slide. All right, if we call up slide number two, what we're gonna add here is some hammer-ons to the, the equation. We're gonna start by doing fifth string open, hammering on to second fret, third fret, with fingers one and two. Take our third finger, we're gonna go to fifth fret harmonic on the fourth string. 
then fifth fret harmonic on the third string. Sounds like this. And we're gonna make that same chord shape we just made a minute ago, that power chord, this one here. Just move that up to the fifth fret, so now it'll be fifth fret on the sixth and fifth strings, and then seventh fret on strings four and three. Like that. Exact same rhythm. We'll do that down, up on the chord, then three clicks, and then the up slide off. You can slide a little further on this one, which makes it sound kind of cool. Check this out. We're gonna go up. Kind of slide off. All right, that second slide sounds like this. The whole riff, let's do slides one and two put together, and I'll play the whole thing slow and you can kind of see how it works in context. And regular speed. All right, so there's the idea for Riff of the Week. Now you can take this lick, and again, as I always tell you, make it your own. Find some way to tweak that out and play something a little bit different. Don't use that exact riff, because that's actually mine from a song called The Music Range Down. And if you want to check that out, all my stuff's available on iTunes, so you can go there. Or you can go to my website, which is markseal.com. All right, I am truly honored to have our guest on today's show, Mr. Brian Swerdfeger. He has been a major inspiration to me the last few months, particularly since I've got to know him personally. We've been doing stuff for Taylor Guitars. He builds rig for, rigs for amazing amount of guitar players, these uh, really high celebrity guys that have the great guitar tones. He's incredible. He's going to show you so much about the gear today, so please welcome Brian Swerdfeger. Thanks, Mark. No worries, buddy. You know, one of the, the things that we see you know, watching music live and, and on TV is a, a wide variety of guitars, and we're so used to it maybe being a fashion statement or it looks good, they, they look good playing that guitar. But a lot of these players are picking guitars for specific reasons. And it's like a craftsman would use a different tool. He would pick a hammer for a certain job or a screwdriver. The same thing goes for guitars. So we're going to take a quick look at guitars and how they kind of work in a functional sense and the tones that they inspire. The classic Fender Stratocaster is a design that's been with us since the 1950s. It's got three simple single coil pickups. You see them under the strings here. They're small and white, and that's what picks up the sound of the strings and has actually a signature tone when we play this instrument. Another classic from the 50s is the Gretsch. Now, this Gretsch I'm holding is a, would be called a sparkle jet, and uh, it's got the, the signature Gretsch pickup, which is called a filtertron. It's a little bit different. It's got another voice, but it's still uh, inherent of kind of the 50s and roots rock sounds you hear a lot of. Moving into the modern era, you've got pickups that are considered humbucking or hum canceling. They started to put two coils together and become a little fatter, and it delivered a fuller, fatter sound. Now this guitar has two of the mini humbuckers, like I showed you on the last instrument, uh, but this time we're going to talk about their location under the strings. Even though they're made in, in a similar fashion, their location and the fact that one is turned a little bit, that influences the sound um, coming out of the, the guitar. Now, if I choose the neck pickup, that's the one closest to the neck, and we call this one a bridge pickup because it's closest to the bridge, the neck pickup is going to sound fuller and a little bassier. Maybe sometimes people say warmer. If I switch to the bridge pickup, you'll hear that it's brighter and maybe even a little more aggressive. I'm so stoked to be sitting here with truly one of my heroes in this business right now, Mr. Brian Swerdfeger. Dude, yeah, thank you so time. much for being out. Greatly appreciate it. My and, privilege. Uh, I just dug watching all the stuff that you just did. But I think what I want to let people know is, first off, you know, how'd you get your start in this business? You know, where did, where did you come from? Um, actually, it's a fun story. I lived the California myth. I played for 10 years at Disneyland in a surf band. Nice. So yeah, I, right out of high school, uh, right into the surf band, playing there, and uh, actually couldn't get my gear worked on being, you know, Orange County kid. So I was driving to LA all the time and tired of doing that. 
So I figured it's it's got to be like audio plumbing. Sound goes right. in somewhere, it comes out the other end. That's exactly. I yeah, can figure this way, out. It's a good way to look at it. <laughs> now, did you get to do the uh, the stage that comes up? Oh, of course, Tomorrowland Terrace. Tomorrowland yeah, Terrace, nice. Big fun, and uh, you know, I learned a lot there. You know, you learn a lot what what works uh, sonically and what what sounds good in your bedroom. It really, it doesn't all the time sound sound great live. Yeah. You have to make adjustments uh, for right. playing with a band and playing live and not be afraid to turn the knobs to make it sound good. That's know? the thing, I always tell all my students on the show, I'm constantly telling them to you know, experiment, get creative, do their own thing. That right. is such an important factor. It sounds like you got way into that to obviously get to where you are now. Yeah, well, you know, it's like, I wasn't one of those kids that took apart radios to, to see what made them work when I was a kid, but with right. guitar, it just, it just so fascinated me and compelled me that I wanted to know how it worked. Right. I wanted to know, maybe what, you know, and so what happens, like guitar players, you know how this goes, is one guy figures it out, and then everybody else comes over to his house and goes, okay, right. what'd you figure out, you know? That's right, and, and uh, try to figure out ways to make it better as well, you know, or right. to make it different. You right, know? and so I was building stomp boxes in my garage and doing that, and, uh, and still playing, and um, eventually somebody saw me playing somewhere with, a, with a, a different band, and they heard the sound and said, gosh, can you help me? And uh, had no idea at the time, but it was Jim West from Weird Al's band. Oh wow! So uh, back in the '80s, right. I, I met him, and he's been in he's been Weird Al guitar uh, Weird Al Yankovic guitar player right. for 25 years now, wow. and he heard me doing some cover sounds, and like I got to get that exact sound for our record. Oh, perfect. So so that was my introduction to starting to work with artists, and I've done all of Jim's gear to help him get all those sounds to cover all those songs. Right. And now, okay, let's talk about that for a minute. When you did something for someone like him, he's trying to make songs that sound like other songs. You're obviously trying to recreate exactly what had happened on the previous recordings. Right. Did you have to do stuff individually for him for the live stuff as well as the studio stuff, or did something that worked in the studio also work live? Uh, a combination of both. You know, he has a live rig that that's flexible and versatile, has a lot of different sounds, and he uses that in the studio. You know, but like we did on the show, you know, you use a baritone for that part. You use a right. A strat for the strat songs, you know. Is there any song that sticks out that you had fun helping them on? Oh, uh, you know, they're, they've just released a new record uh, that's got the Green Day tune a cover on it. What, and, what song do they cover? Uh, you know, I don't know the name of it. Okay. I'm really bad at that. Right, okay. uh, but um, it, it was the big hit from last year, okay. and you know, we we went and found a, a, a Les Paul special with the little P90 pickups and a Marshall right. amp, and it's and totally got the gone. sound dialed in. Nice. See, that that would be fun. That that sounds like a really neat gig. And uh, okay, well, then speaking of like artists, what other artists have you worked with? You know, it's a, it, it's a wide variety. It, it drives my wife and kids nuts because they hear all this different music that I'm listening to right. to, to get. But uh, during the '80s, you know, I was I was working with Warrant and Firehouse and metal bands. Now, did you have big hair also? No, I actually didn't. Because <laughs> I was playing at Disneyland, had to have the, oh, the, right. the right haircut, you know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but um, worked with those guys on, on their records and their touring rigs, and then. Uh, Madonna's band for the Live to Tell tour, mm -hmm. uh, all the way through like jazz guys like uh, Frank Cambali and John yeah. Patitucci and Chick Corea Electric Band, nice. to Weird Al, to Anthrax, to you know. To one of my very favorites, Peter yeah, Frampton. Recently, I've been doing working with Peter Frampton uh, the last four or five years, and uh, you know the talk box rig and everything. Nice. Uh, and he's just a super sweet guy and a great guitar player. Yeah. Who just loves to play guitar, and that's. You know, I think that's the thing is that's the common among all artists is they really got into it the same reason we did and, yeah. and your viewers do. It's yeah. fun to play. It's just a blast. It's, it's I mean, the experimentation of getting these different sounds and even when you create somebody else's sounds, that's got to be fun for you being on stage, teching for his, you know, say you're teching for Frampton, you know, you actually get to go out and, and use all the gear that he's using and play his rig, right? Yeah, I mean, all, it, it, all the stuff lives in my garage for a month or two as we're, you know, designing and, and building and programming and so I'll actually play his rig before he does. Right. Uh, Have you done the talk and, box on his uh, rig? Everything, you know. Does it make your teeth rattle? Oh, that, were man, you just telling me just, that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It, it, it's one of those things that looks easy, right. but then after five minutes of it, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> you got to get your feelings replaced. Right, the whole thing. right. But yeah, and in fact, a lot of times I'll be the stand-in for the artist as they go through rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So I'll rehearse the band nice. and play the artist parts and get all the tones dialed in, and then the artist can come in and, and do final rehearsals before a tour. Yeah. Now, does that inspire you to want to go out and play live yourself, or do you kind of like doing the behind-the-scenes stuff, or what? You know, where? I do both. You... you know, I mean, I love to play. I, I still play every week, uh, and the I think sounds inspire me. You know, when you when you find a sound that inspires a part, that which inspires a, a record yeah. or a hit. That's uh, very you know, true. I, it that's 
satisfying to me and fulfilling as much as going out and playing the stadium. Right. Well, I've noticed I've been places with you. Brian and I do stuff together where we'll actually do stuff for Taylor Guitars. We'll do clinics for the T5, which is the guitar he's holding there. And a lot of people recognize you when we go out and they're like, where do I know? Oh, he's the guy on the Taylor video. So you've done a boatload of videos for Taylor, right? I have. Uh, okay. You know, they, the, the Taylor folks are wonderful. And one of the things that they recognize is that they need to inform their their customers and future customers of, of how these things all work. And so I'm kind of the inside uh, answer man as far as right. you know, Tone Meister goes. And, and we on, do videos for Expression System or the T5. The, you, know, you get a, a DVD when you buy one of these guitars and uh, the DVD in the case is me teaching you how to use it. Nice. So it's kind of fun. Brian and I had the opportunity to go to the Summer NAMM show this last uh, couple months ago out in Austin, Texas. That was a blast, and that's what it was. It was a lot of, you know, the behind the scenes, the hang is like half the fun. I mean, you can be on stage in front of, you know, 10,000 people, and that's fun. Or you can be hanging out with a bunch of guys like Brian, and like I'm constantly, I mean, I probably annoy you because I'm picking your brain all the time, but it's awesome because when I talk to you, I learn every single time I play guitar forever. And uh, since I was a little kid, and I learn something from you every time we hook up, and it's really cool. So it's, it's neat that you have such a good knowledge of, of all the workings of all this stuff. I'm, I've gotten a lot more knowledgeable in the last few years about it, but. I was always a player and a teacher and didn't right. know much about the gear and uh, it's really inspiring for me to see someone like you doing what you're doing. It really helps us guys out and I right. imagine it helps all my audience out which is why I wanted to have sure. you on Sure. Well, show. I want to encourage your audience too, you know, as they're learning their, the technique and, and where to place their fingers and how to strike the strings, um, you know, you don't have to spend as much time with it but spend time trying out different gear Yeah. and you don't have to buy it and buy and sell and buy and sell. It's like play a buddy's rig. You know you're you know, gonna, you, but you are gonna you know, buy and sell and buy and sell. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of the that's that's part, part of the community. Of the that's yeah. right. Yeah, but but you know that's where I think you really will grow as a player when you know your tools. Yeah. It's you know I, I equate it to driving. We all learn to drive, and we can go up and down the street and stop at stop signs and and do the mechanics of it. But better drivers have better control of going around a corner a little faster, right? right? You know how to brake or how to accelerate or how to get out of the way of something as you learn your control of your vehicle. Well, this is our vehicle, right? Yeah. This is our voice. And so the better we know it, the more places we can go. You can go off-road. You can right. go around a corner at 60 miles an hour with two wheels on the ground right. and not lose it. And that's just because you have, you're intimately familiar with your gear and your instrument as well as what you're playing. Right, it's all one. And a right. lot of times I think the, the tendency for us is to focus on one thing, focus on just playing or just gear acquisition or, right. Right. You know, or whatever. But it's, it's nice when it all comes together where somebody can play, they're playing with good equipment and their right. sound is good. I mean, that's really the end right. all and that's the goal. And, and one other encouragement is you never arrive. Yeah, um, if you, you ever know, think you've arrived, yeah, you yeah, you think I, you're there, yeah, then, then you and I not. know that, but, but you know, even the, the, the most platinum selling artist I work with is still neurotic about his tone, yeah. you know, and it's like, is this okay? You know, or what are you using? Right, you know? yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, that's a fun part. It's a lifetime of, of discovery, and what you may be pleasing now, it will be completely different yeah. three years from now. Well, it's true, you can look back at the 80s, and right. everybody had that sound. Everybody, you know, was trying to rip off Van Halen for a long time, mm -hmm. and now if you hear a guitar solo on the radio, it's like a miracle, you right. know? <laughs> so hopefully, you. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that's coming back soon. That's it. Well, dude, thanks so much for coming out and offering all the insight. If you want to see more of, of Brian's videos, go to taylor.com, or taylorguitars.com? taylorguitars.com. taylorguitars.com, and also he has his own website, uh, tonelounge.com. You'll want to check that out just like it sounds. T O N E L O U N G E.com. And uh, thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Ultimate Guitar Show. If you'd like more information on the show, you can log on to the Ultimate Guitar Show.com. And there you'll find all the downloads from today's show, the slides, and all the pertinent information that you need to know. I want to thank SDCOE, Cox Channel 3. I want to thank Musicians Institute, Taylor Guitars, and of course, Brian Swerdfigger for being here on the show today. We hope to see you back here next time on the Ultimate Guitar Show, and please tell a friend.
This program has been made available by the generous support of Musicians Institute, the world's most innovative school of contemporary music.